Hello creeps, Anda here, and today I wanted to talk about the movie Old and compare it to the graphic novel called Sandcastle. And uh, yeah, we're just going to talk a little bit about both. I made a video maybe a month ago kind of raging <laughs> at all of the plot holes in the movie Old, so I do recommend you guys checking that out because I'll be, you know, calling back some of the things that I've said in that video. So I'll leave that one linked down below if you guys wanted to watch me just get a little heated about the movie for like, I don't know, 10 minutes. But either way, let's jump in and uh, yeah, let's compare the movie old to the graphic novel Sandcastle. Be aware I'm going to have to give some stuff away because I'm talking about it and I, I think I give away like pretty much the whole book, so keep that in mind. But basically the movie and the book have similar starts where there's a group of tourists who are on some sort of beach, they become stuck on the beach, they cannot leave, and they come to find out that, here's where the differences start, in the movie their cells are speeding up quickly and in the book time is moving quickly. So we'll be talking a little bit about each of those and at the very end I'm going to talk about the few issues that I have with the book as well. So that's kind of where the similarities end. The general concept is the same, but pretty much everything else is different. So characters all switched, all different. The doctor's wife is a different wife in the movie, and you can tell because they look very similar, but they're switched. And um, the children are all different. Mid-sized Sedan, who is the rapper in the movie, is actually, I think he's like a jeweler from the Middle East which makes more sense in the book. We'll get that, we'll get to that in a second. Oh, and in the book he actually spends the night on the island, which obviously, as we know, as I ranted about in the last video, makes zero sense. It doesn't make any sense that he was trapped there overnight. That is another issue with the book that I didn't even think about until now, but that's okay. Let's move on. One difference is that their cell phones do work, that he, they are able to call out for help, and then when they call the number back again, the number says that it is invalid. So just little things here and there. This is a pretty big one though. The environment in the book is not sterile. I talked about this a lot in the video prior and we see crabs, flies, birds, bees, jellyfish. There is no um, indication that there is no life on the beach as there is in the movie. And I think this was done for a specific reason in the movie. Here's what I'm trying to say. The changes from the book to the movie I think were done to make the movie make more sense and I think the reverse happened. I think they ended up making it too complicated and not really making much sense out of it. So I'm a little confused at why some of these changes took place. Uh, growing hair is discussed in the book. It is talked about, it is seen that the children grow hair, lay hair, what have you. I think that's maybe why it was focused on in the movie and specifically stated that hair is not affected. But again, if you watched that video, you saw that I had a bit of an issue with that. There are different theories in the book about what is happening. So it's not outwardly stated like it is in the movie. In the movie, they are experimented on, they are being watched heavily, and that is what happens. In the book, it's a little bit more vague. There's a science fiction writer who is stuck with them on the island, which does not happen in the movie, and he floats some theories, you know, maybe we're all having a group hallucination, maybe there's some sort of chemical here that's speeding up our cells uh, or time, and then at the end he does say maybe it is an experiment. Yeah, it's kind of left open a little bit more for interpretation. There's no big scene at the end, and it's so funny because like the things that I didn't like about the movie were different in the book. So I just thought that that was really interesting. Oh, here's a big one. Here's one I'd like to talk about. So we discussed in the last video about how the doctor, I was a little frustrated that he had schizophrenia. I felt like it would have made more sense if he had Alzheimer's. He seemed a little bit more confused and it just, it felt to me like he had some sort of like cognitive degenerative disease versus schizophrenia. And guess what he has in the book, my friends? He has Alzheimer's. Why, why? Why would you change that? It just, it didn't make sense to me, some of the changes that happened. I felt like it made so much more sense in the book, so I just don't understand why you would take it, take the same doctors, take the same characteristics, and then have make him have a different issue. And it's so weird too, because in the movie it's explicitly stated, well I think you should separate mentally ill patients from patients who are like physically ill. And like, yeah, just make him have Alzheimer's and it fixes all of those problems. I, I just 
do not understand what the reasoning was behind that. And that is something that really irked me and something that I liked much more in the book. I just felt like it made more sense. It's not like I'm a specialist on this topic by any means, but to me, I just felt like it made more sense. There is a story on page 98. So it is told for, from the man who is Middle Eastern. It's like a Middle Eastern fable kind of story. And it's about a man who is visited. He's like a king or something. Um, he was visited by a messenger of death and he begins to panic and he says, no, I haven't had enough time here. Please give me seven more years. And so the messenger says, okay, between tomorrow and seven years from now, I will come back for you. And he says, okay, but he thinks he's going to trick the messenger of death. He ends up locking himself into essentially a cell in the top of his castle and his guards stop anyone from seeing him, his wife, his kids, no one's allowed in. And so he just isolates himself and lives miserably in fear for the rest of his life as opposed to enjoying what remaining time he has left. This of course is like such a strong story and important for the entire moral and like what we get out of the story. I don't really understand why it was cut and clipped from the movie and not involved in there because I think it was like it was honestly one of my favorite parts of the book. I also really liked that the man says to the children, do you guys want to hear a story? And all the children go, yeah, and run and, and huddle beside him. Although they look like adults or teens or, or whatever they are at, at that point into the night, their brains still react like children. And so I thought that this was a great scene. Still a little confused why it wasn't involved. Maybe it was like a little too on the nose to include something like this. But I really enjoyed it. I thought that it was great. And um, yeah, a huge difference, I think, from the movie and the book. No one escapes. That's a big difference. And honestly, everything that I said I wished happened didn't happen in the movie, that's how the book ended. Like, I don't like the ending with the experiments. I thought everyone should have died on the beach. I thought it would have made a stronger uh, ending. And that's exactly what happens in the book. There's also comments about wishing your life away in age and time. These are the similarities. 30 minutes equals one year. And then some of the lines are the same and the general concept we covered is kind of the same as well. Oh, and then here is a difference too. The sandcastles are very important in the story. On page 76 and 77, let me just read you one line here. I'm not showing you any of the pictures, by the way, because there's a lot of like nudity and stuff in them. But basically one of the men, I can't tell if it's the doctor or the man from the Middle East, but he says, could be that the sandcastles will still be there tomorrow and we're going to disappear like insects. And then at the very, very end of the book, there's one of the children that remains alive. The rest of the older people have perished and most of them do honestly just die of old age. And then on the very last page, she is just making a sandcastle of her own and crying. And to me, I think that the same castle is a metaphor for like obviously enjoying the time that you have left, but maybe also a metaphor for leaving something behind, even if that's just like memories, like good memories with people and things like that. So I loved the incorporation of the sand castle in the book and the movie. And I thought that it was cool that they did kind of, you know, bring that theme throughout, but I think it just had a stronger message in the book. Okay, and then really quick, let me just talk about the few issues that I had with the book. One of them being they had been there before. This is a weird one. I don't really understand how this is possible, but basically the doctor comes to the island with his children and he says, hey, Lewis, come and see how much you've grown since last year. And they stand at a warning sign and it is shown lines that sort of indicate that they've come years and years and that is the height that the child was at in the different years that they've come. I thought this was weird. He also mentions that he knows the guy who runs the resort. So I don't really understand how that's feasible that they've been to this place before and then all of a sudden they're stuck there in aging. So that was something that I wish was kind of kept out of here. Although maybe it has a little bit more meaning that I just don't understand fully. And then um, with the whole time is moving, not just their cells accelerating, dead bodies aren't affected the way that living bodies are, which I feel like doesn't make sense either way. Um, yeah, it doesn't make sense. It, do it doesn't make sense that the dead bodies wouldn't be like time is sped up. So why would the dead bodies be left alone? It, it, that just really bothered me in the book. I didn't think that made sense. 
But yeah, isn't that interesting that a lot of the things that I didn't like about the movie were different in the book and made a lot more sense in the book and were how I envisioned them to be or how I thought would might be better for the movie. They're all in here. So needless to say, I did enjoy the movie. I liked the thought behind it, the, the, the thought evoking, you know, live your life to the fullest, enjoy your life kind of thoughts. But I will say I did enjoy the book more. I thought that there was a little bit more here than in the movie. It was less convoluted with the added things. It was just, you know, these people surviving on the beach. I thought it made for a bit more of like a meaningful, impactful story. So let me know what you guys think about this. If you guys have seen the old movie old, if you liked it, if you guys will pick up the graphic novel Sandcastle. Thank you guys so much for watching and I will see you soon with another video. Bye guys.